Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. A little while ago, I posted my big ranking video of all of the 007 films, and in that video, I made a couple of passing comments about films that I think are very deserving of the status as being uh, Mount Rushmore Bond films, if you will. That is to say, films that are amongst the most iconic, the most essential, the four films that you would choose to chisel into the side of a mountain so that Cary Grant and Eve Marie Saint could escape the bad guys by running across the top of them. It was a bit of an unfinished thought in that video, but I was strolling through James Bond topics on Reddit, as I'm known to do, and I saw that these comments had sparked a bit of a conversation there. There was a thread where people were posting what they consider to be the four most essential films of the series, what they think of as being Mount Rushmore Bond films, so I thought that I should probably finish my own thoughts on the subject in a dedicated video. Now, these aren't necessarily my four favourite films in the series, so I'm kind of trying to step out of my own personal preferences with this and just select the films that I think, objectively, give you the broadest sense of what cinematic Bond is all about. The films that feature the touchstones, the ones that really feel like they brought something to the culture at large, the films that need to be locked away in the world's most secure vault, so that in case of a nuclear apocalypse, future civilizations will still be able to enjoy Roger Moore and Barbara back necking in the back of a velvet-lined floatable sex pod. This video also covers another base for me, a question that I get asked a fair amount, actually, is from people who say, like, oh, you know, my girlfriend, boyfriend, family, friends don't really like Bond. What do you think would be a good uh, starting point for them if I were going to try to get them into Bond? And I think that overlaps a bit with the films that I would consider to be the four most essential ones of the series. As I say, I'm kind of trying to be a bit objective with this, but I think that the four films that I'm going to cite here are the ones that, you know, if, if you watch these four films and don't like any of them, then uh, Bond is probably not for you, because I think that these four films cover a fair few bases uh, of the series throughout time. So I'm going to go through these four films, explain why I would place them on my Mount Rushmore of Bond films. I'm going to explain my reasoning, and then I'm going to follow up with a further four films, which I think are probably uh, level two essential Bond watchers. Um, I'll explain more when we get there, though. But yes, yeah, so we're going to start off with uh, what I guess is the George Washington of Bond films, then. Uh, just an absolute Bond film classic, a uh, classic of cinema more broadly, I would say, and it's, uh, well, it's probably the most essential Bond film of them all, and it is, of course, Goldfinger. You don't need me to tell you that this is a stone-cold classic. It covers so many of the trademarks, elements, tropes that have become synonymous with the series, and it was, in many ways, the blueprint Bond film for a lot of what came after. It has an absolute iconic Bond performance in Sean Connery, iconic Bond girl in Pussy Galore, iconic villain in Goldfinger, iconic henchman in Oddjob, there's the DB5 of course, there's a whole load of really fun gadgets, there's classic MQ money penny scenes, there's quips, lots of fun and exciting action, an iconic title song, Goldfinger has it all. Brilliant. Now, a slight caveat here, I'm not necessarily going through the order uh, of importance here, I'm going chronologically, but all that being said, Goldfinger probably would stick out to me as being the Bond film to watch. If you were only ever going to watch one Bond film to kind of get a get a bit of a gist of what the whole James Bond thing is about, then I think you should watch Goldfinger. Next to Goldfinger, I would place Roger Moore's third Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. Spy was the series bouncing back from a bit of a commercial and critical disappointment of The Man with the Golden Gun, and there was a bunch of behind-the-scenes turmoils going on in the three-year gap between those films, and this was producer Cubby Broccoli coming back with everything to prove as a solo producer on these films, and The Spy Who Loved Me stands as the most iconic of the large-scale spectacle Bond films, I think. When a lot of people tend to think of Bond villains, they tend to think of huge, extravagant bases, world domination plots, nuclear weapons being in the mix and all that, and there are several Bond films that cover those bases, but I think that Spy stands as the one to watch, and I also think that it covers the Cold War base quite well, which is another significant element of the series. Cold War tensions, and in the film, Bond pairs up with a Soviet agent, which is a really cool dynamic, and Anya represents that kind of, uh, you know, Bond's equal Bond girl uh, really well, and is, uh, you know, that's also a recurring element of the series, too. How does that grab you? After Spy, I would go for Goldeneye, and I'm sure that people are going to accuse me of bias here, considering that, yes, it is my favourite film of the series, but much like Spy, it represents something of a rejuvenation of the series, and it has become a bit of a cultural touchstone 
Bond movie for a lot of millennials, myself included. It retains all the classic elements of a Bond film, whilst also subverting them and putting a contemporary 1995 spin on things. Each of these films I'm citing, I think, work as a snapshot in time of the eras in which they were made, and I think of GoldenEye as being the quintessential 90s Bond film. Standard operating procedure. Boys with toys. And finally, we have Casino Royale, the first Daniel Craig Bond film as the final addition to my Mount Rushmore of Bonds. Similar to GoldenEye, Casino represents a gear shift moment in the film series, and is a crucial foundation, a crucial building block for which the individual actor can build on top of for the rest of their respective eras. Casino Royale is something of a modern classic more broadly too. I think it shares a similar status with Goldfinger and GoldenEye as a film that has transcended the series and is quite recognisable to people who are perhaps non-Bond obsessives, though admittedly I try to avoid spending much time around such people myself. Casino Royale is an iconic film, and while it's not my personal favourite of the Craig era, it is the one that I think tells you what his era is all about broadly and effectively. It's a reinvention of the Bond cinematic formula, and a pretty groundbreaking one. That's because you know what I can do with my little finger. All four films are collectively very well reviewed, often ranked at the top of each of their respective actors' tenures in scholar lists, public votes and so on, all were big financial successes and all left a lasting impact on the series itself, as well as the movie culture more broadly, which is why they stand as my own personal Bond Mount Rushmore. These are also the four that I would first recommend to any newbie dipping their toes into the jacuzzi with Bond for the first time, though with the caveat of, you know, if you're showing these films to people for the first time, I'd recommend starting with an era that you think would work best for them, uh, that is better suited to their individual film tastes. I know people, I even have friends, who do not much care for films made prior to the 1980s, the 1970s, and while me and my Buster Keaton collection may well think they are lunatics, I do appreciate that older films might not necessarily be for everyone. And for those people, it may well make more sense, you may have a better chance of them actually getting into this series if you start with Casino Royale and or GoldenEye or maybe even more films from the Craig and Brosnan eras and then maybe working, you know, their way back to the tentpole classics if they like those films. So I'm going to shift gears a bit now. On that Reddit post that I mentioned earlier, I noticed that someone had posted their Mount Rushmore bonds and then they'd also listed four more as what they described as the deep cut cult favourites, uh, specifically from Rush With Love on Her Majesty's Secret Service, For Your Eyes only, and then either of the Dalton films. It did get me thinking about how my four Rushmore Bonds are very much your typical popular cinematic Bond, uh, and they maybe don't do the best job of translating what is essentially Fleming's Bond to screen, so I thought it might be fun to do my own list, my own deep cut Rushmore Bonds, uh, and these are probably the ones that I would say, you know, for a newbie, if you've watched those first four that I've mentioned and really like them, these are the four that I'd recommend moving on to for something of a different flavour of what the series can bring. And right off the bat, I would also say that From Rush With Love deserves to be on the deep cut Mount Rushmore list. Uh, it's a really close adaptation of the Fleming novel, it's more grounded, but it still has a good sense of humour and a bit of grandeur about it, and importantly, it's a wonderful showcase of Connery in the role. It's a real wonderful showcase of the Bond character, and just a really terrific Cold War spy thriller in its own right. Next up, I'm still in agreement with the original post-it here, inciting On Her Majesty's Secret Service. It's a, another really close Fleming adaptation, and really showcases the character of Bond, it's a tragic love story, as well as a super fun spy adventure. For my third, I would say a Dalton Bond, but I'm actually gonna say License to Kill over the Living Daylights. Daylights represents a more faithful adaptation of Fleming in parts, but I think that License to Kill is a more important film in the wider context of the series, given the push in intensity and violence. I think that License has a bit more of a unique flavour to it in the context of the series, and therefore probably a better watch than The Living Daylights, I would say, if you were just wanting to sample the series' variety. And for my final one, I feel like I'm going to potentially ruffle some feathers with this, I'm actually going to say Skyfall, uh, primarily because when it comes to Fleming's Bond, Skyfall, better than any other Bond film, I think captures a 
defeated, malaiseful bond that is so prominent in Fleming's writing, most notably and obviously, I think, in You Only Live Twice. And I think it's a side of bond that I don't think we get to see in the films all that much, but Skyfall really leans into it in a big way, and so I do think that if you were to do a deep cut into Fleming's bond as a character, as represented in these films, Skyfall would actually be quite complementary. So there we go, Goldfinger, The Spy Who Loved Me, Goldeneye, and Casino Royale are what I would say are the Mount Rushmore Bond films, and on a smaller mount next to it, uh, maybe we'll call it Slight Mound Rushmore, uh, <laughs> the deeper cut Bond films I would cite as being from Russia with Love, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, License to Kill, and Skyfall. I feel like those last two are gonna be the ones that receive the most <laughs> contention, uh, but I would be curious to know what you think about those, and indeed what you would cite as your Mount Rushmore Bonds, and then your uh, deep cut Slight Mound Rushmore 4. I have a feeling there's gonna be some universal agreement over those first four. I think that it's gonna be in the deep cut four where we uh, have some more variety. Uh, but yes, please do let me know your own lists in the comment section below. Also below, links to my various socials, so do follow me on those. There's the subscribe button and the Mrs. Bell notification button, so do click those if you wanna stay up to date on future video uploads. And with all that being said, and until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.